Ladies and gentlemen, AMD Zen 5 architecture is shaping up to be one of the more intriguing processor lineups that the company have worked on in quite some time. This is due to numerous reasons. Firstly, IPC gains do appear to be very impressive indeed, and obviously performance is, well, one of the main reasons you want to upgrade your rig. But there are also numerous architecture changes across the board, which range from ALUs down to the CPU caches, which are very innovative. But further to all of this, the market segmentation of Zen 5 is very different to how AMD have handled previous releases. Their strategy is just very different indeed. Zen 5 will appear in a plethora of products, of course, from desktop to APUs to servers. And if you've watched the channel for any length of time, you'll know that I've put out a couple of my own Zen 5 rumor videos in the past. But there were some elements particularly concerning the caches where, frankly, I was receiving extremely conflicting information. I was told by a few sources quite early on with my rumours that there were almost certainly larger L2 caches, and perhaps L3 had some type of unified structure. I just wasn't sure what. I'd been told maybe it was across different CCXs or something or another. But this was at odds versus other sources. And obviously, since I'm not inside AMD's labs myself, looking through design documents, it becomes very difficult to know what's actually true information, what isn't true, or just what has changed during Bring Up. And this brings me to a very interesting video which has been released by Jim over at Adore TV. Of course, I will leave a link to his video in the description. But basically, his video confirms that AMD have test chips in the lab with both 2 and 3 megabytes of L2 cache. Now, it is possible that this may not end up in the final design of Zen 5. After all, things can change up until the last minute. But according to his data, these two configurations are as follows. L2 cache is both 2 and 3 megabytes. And this increases performance by a couple of percent with each, with each increase, as you can, of course, see on screen. This is during multi-thread workloads, though, so, of course, it will definitely differ on a case-by-case -case basis. Additionally to this, AMD are redefining the structure and the architecture of the L3 cache. From the way it works in Zen 4, well, it basically is some type of ring bus solution. But this is being changed to a ladder solution, which again, you can see on screen. I will add that this is not exactly how it looks. It's just kind of a mock-up that Jim's put together here so you can get a rough indication of how the functionality would be. Now, what this basically means is that you would get lower latency for various cores and improved performance. But further, this will scale to both 8 and 16 core configurations of Zen 5. And yes, we will see increased core variants of Zen 5 when it comes to the actual CCXs. So this is also going to be dependent upon the process itself. Remember that uh, Zen is being manufactured on a couple of different processes. AMD have kind of hinted that in official roadmaps anyway. But basically, the cutting edge process is going to be, well, basically certain server processors and desktop, for example, will be the larger process. But I will also add just a small caveat here. There could be some crossover, particularly when it comes to APUs. Again, I've discussed this fairly at length in a previous video, and I'll link that in the video description. Now... A source early on did tell me, in fact, they insisted that L3 cache was unified. And then other sources told me this is probably not the case. Now, I'm uncertain whether the first source got their wires crossed and got kind of the same information which Jim received, or their information was just incorrect, and it has absolutely nothing to do with the ladder configuration. I honestly don't know. However, for reference, that same source told me that L2 cache was larger. And of course, this has been backed up by numerous other sources. I will also point out that to my current understanding, the core count for desktop is still 16 cores total. Um, now, I have heard murmurs that AMD could raise this core count. But I'm skeptical they will do this because there's just... Not really a need to do so against Intel. Now, if you've been following along with the Intel rumors, you'll probably get an idea why. Um, this year, uh, which won't affect Zen 5 anyway because it's not launching this year, of course, but this year we see the Raptor Lake refresh. Basically, it's the same thing all over again, just with some tweaks in terms of the number of cores in the mid-range and some improvements in clock frequency and power, blah, blah, blah. Not really that interesting. The 15th generation, though, will see 
a, well, very intriguing direction for Intel. There will be a Meteor Lake for the lower end SKUs, and the higher end variants like i9 will be Arrow Lake. Bionic Squash leaked this on Twitter, and again, it kind of matches up to some of my own exclusive information that I've released a couple of times. So, I'm hearing now that Arrow Lake, for its P cores, probably has low 20% IPC games. Frankly, I've heard mixed things with some people telling me a little more. I, for now, I'm going to remain on the skeptical side and say low 20%. I've also been told that Meteor Lake has single digit IPC gains, possibly low single digit gains over Raptor Lake. Again, these are P cores. So basically, Arrow Lake were also um, forced to cut down the core count. So we're looking at 8 slash 16 cores. So it's going to be very interesting, honestly, to see how Intel and AMD end up. Now, obviously, there will also be X3D variants of Zen 5. We know that's happening. And it's going to be very interesting to see how that will affect performance for numerous reasons with the larger L2 caches, for example. I also do wonder um, what AMD's strategy will be when it comes to the general marketing of these processors. Speaking of AMD, there is just one other small thing I'd like to cover. I'm going to leave a link to this in the video description um, because it's kind of a bigger issue. But many of you may be aware of the Ryzen 7000 CPU, let's say, issues. AMD have officially identified the root core of this and it's basically related to higher chip voltage. So what does this mean? Well, a spokesperson was speaking to Anantech and you can see the quote on screen. Um, we have a root cause the issue and already distributed new adhesive that puts the measures in place on certain power rails on AM5 motherboards to prevent the CPU from operating beyond its specification limits, including a cap on the SOC voltage at 1.3 volts. None of these changes affect the ability of our Ryzen 7000 series processors to overclock memory when using X, uh, XPO or XMP kits or boost performance using PBO. We expect all of our ODM partners to release new BIOSes over the next few days, and we recommend all users check their motherboard manufacturer's website, update their BIOS to ensure system has the most up-to-date uh, software for the processor. Anyone whose processor has been affected by this should contact AMD customer support, and they're aware of the issue, and they are prioritizing these cases. So, you know what? That's actually a pretty fast reaction from AMD, actually. Not saying this is a good thing obviously any processor failure any hardware failure whatsoever is never good but they handled this quickly to their credit and yeah um let me know guys if you've had a processor which is affected by this do let me know as well if uh, amd have resolved these problems for you it's going to be very interesting to see what the turnaround for this is like um but yeah, I'm just adding this in as a bit of a PSA because I know that it has been a bit of a concern for people. So um, yeah, you can uh, email me or you can uh, reach out to me on Twitter. With that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. I'm going to let you guys go. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.